Variety is supposed to be the spice of life, and there's nothing wrong with trying to branch out and do things that are unique or have been done before, but there are times when you see something and you can't help but be Ryan Reynolds and go, but why? For example, motorcycles. They're two-wheeled epic vehicles that have been symbolic for generations of riders, and some people have turned them into custom choppers or rides that are just too cool. But other times, they take it in the opposite direction. So from a bike that resembles Alien to the Yohammer electric bike, here are 20 of the weirdest motorcycles in the world. Number 20. Predator Alien Bike Alien is one of the most iconic movie monsters of all times. Slender, skeletal, and menacing, this creature has been giving everyone the chill since 1979. This killing machine from outer space was a product of one brilliant dark mind, and it instantly became a pop culture icon for its unforgettable looks. As such, it became an inspiration for many other artists obsessed with horror, space, and everything that connects those two. So it's no surprise that people have taken their love of alien to certain heights, which includes doing things like sculptures, various artistic pieces, especially in the realm of comic books, and then there's a guy who decided to make a motorcycle out of the creature. The man is a self-taught sculptor from Thailand with a clear talent for recreating things, and he used that talent to make an alien motorcycle. And by that, I mean that you're literally riding on top of the alien xenomorph that just so happens to be attached to other bike parts so that it's functional. Artistically, it's perfect. Seriously, if you look at the detail of the bike, you'll see that it's a true work of art that this man should be proud of. But I'm not talking about a work of art, I'm talking about a motorcycle, and in that respect, why go down this path? First of all, you're going to be getting a lot of looks, and it's not exactly the good way at times. Secondly, it doesn't look like the most comfortable thing to ride. Again, it is beautiful, but it's not exactly the most natural of motorcycles. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. Yohammer Electric Bike the world right now is very much changing in terms of how vehicles are being made and, most importantly, how they're being powered. Companies like Tesla are trying to shift the entire world towards electric vehicles, and it's starting to make an impact. However, the motorcycle world is a bit of catching up to do in more ways than one. An electric motorcycle from Austrian electric mobility firm Yohammer is like nothing else on the road, and for good reason, as it breaks almost completely with traditional motorcycle design in favor of a decidedly unconventional approach to electric transport. The aluminum-framed Yohammer J1 is wrapped in a funky polypropylene body, which hides the 11 kilowatt electric drivetrain and a big old battery to go with it packed onto its low-slung chassis. To its credit, it does get 124 miles on a single charge, which is perfect for those who need to do certain trips, but without going cross-country. Furthermore, despite its odd shape, it apparently handles great, getting good speeds of up to 75 miles per hour, and it's not bad to ride on. So why is it dubbed a weird motorcycle? Well, that's because it doesn't look like a motorcycle. Granted, not every bike has to look like one another, as choppers and bombers would prove, but this is different on all levels. And while it may ride great, how many people are honestly going to want to get this motorcycle versus one that may be gas-powered, but is actually nice looking? Aesthetics do matter in purchases, whether we realize it or not, and this one isn't going to win any awards for looks. Number 18. The Last Vetter Fairing 30 years ago, Craig Vetter inspired motorcycle tinkerers to devise bikes that could go more than 400 miles on one gallon of gas. However, almost nobody cared. 
After running his Craig Vetter Fuel Economy Challenge for a few years in the 1980s, he then discontinued the event. The reason for this was that they felt they had learned all they could at that point in time. Vetter, of course, is also the designer who changed motorcycling with his creation of the Windjammer fairing, working out of a plant in Illinois. He helped to make riding a lot more comfortable. The last Vetter fairing was a very streamlined looking bike, despite the fact that it was yet another atypical kind of motorcycle design. That was actually another reason why they shut down the economy challenge, as their designs were not what people wanted. Though obviously that has changed, and the challenges have returned with one of making a better electric motorcycle so that the world can enjoy riding without damaging the environment. The goal here is to make an electric bike that can go cross country, either on a single battery charge or at least a small amount of charges. The second one is obviously the more likely, but you never know given the advances in battery tech as of late. So what began as a failed experiment has gotten new life and their bikes are still honestly weird to look at, especially with their bulky frames. But if this leads to new revolutions in electric motorcycles, then we're all here for it. Number 17. Farm Tractor Cycle Now, I'm really not sure what to talk about with this one because it kind of speaks for itself in a whole lot of ways. Somebody decided to go and put together a makeshift thing of a tractor with a certain bike engine, and then they designed the rear seating so that they could pilot it and basically make a farm tractor cycle hybrid thing. I don't really get it either. The irony of this is many fold though, not the least of which is that despite this looking nothing like a motorcycle, it technically is one. Not to mention when it came time to race this against a V8 engine truck, the motorcycle not only won, but it also won handily to the point where the announcer of the race himself went from laughing at the ride to cheering it on like he was its number one fan. Now, look, I totally get the desire to show off what you can do build-wise, and clearly this guy has some mechanical tinkering in his blood to make it work as well as it did, but then again, I can't help but ask, why? Is it cool that he went and beat a truck that was engineered to be fast and have power? Well, absolutely. But what can we honestly say about this bike otherwise? It's not exactly something that everyone would want or even should want if I'm being honest here. It's a cool bike, but it's definitely a one-off and maybe it should stay that way. Number 16. Motorcycle Dirt Drag Racing Top Fuel Motorcycles, the most violent drag racing machines on the planet, square off at a dirt strip where they have no business being. They rip passes, a maelstrom of noise and rooster tails, for nearly five minutes. There's no music, there's no announcer, not even a story or any fancy intro or ending credits. And then, just as unceremoniously as it begins, it is over. The video takes place somewhere in West Virginia and was shot by a construction worker named Jeff Tomlin. Some of the bikes are pushing crazy horsepower. Still, though, the questions linger. What is is dirt drag racing? Where does the sport come from? Who are these guys exactly? And why are they scorching earth on two-wheeled widowmakers? Well, it turns out they're riders first and foremost, and they don't really care about the standard things like fame or fortune. For example, they only make about $1,000 if you win a big event, and even if you do win, it takes a lot to get things to where you need them to be to even do a single run, let alone multiple ones. One champion of the sport estimates that each pass costs him about $100, and it takes two people and three car batteries just to get the engine going. The fuel alone is about $25 a gallon, and the crankcase has to be drained between runs, and its contents comes out in two colors, black and seasick green. As it turns out, nitromethane causes the latter when it mixes with oil, and restarting the bike with that combination could actually cause an explosion. That's awesome. Despite all of this and the fact that it's just a subsection of racing, people love to do it with bikes that have no business being what they are. But they're there, and people do watch. So I guess in the end, everyone wins. Number 15. Scooter 
Now hold up, you may cry. A scooter's not a motorcycle. And you would be right. By the true definition of things, a scooter is not a motorcycle. It has an entirely different principle to make it work in terms of engines, brakes, top speeds, and so on. And it's true, there are laws about the kind of scooter that you can drive and where you can drive them, but that's more about the driver's safety than anything else. However, if you think that there aren't people who have souped up scooters just to see how fast they can go, well, you haven't been paying attention to the human race for the last 100 years. Mobility scooters, for example, are meant to help people get around via mechanical means while also ensuring their safety. There are even different classes of them, some of which can honestly be on the road in the right circumstances. However, some people just want to make these things go really fast. Like really, really fast. And thus, you have a certain world record breaking mobility scooter that got up to 107 miles per hour on a track. Anderson's Body Shop was the team that made this happen, and you have to admit that this is something special, getting a scooter to go as fast as that. But once again, you really have to ask, why would anyone do this? More than likely, it was because of how they can get a world record for the event, and that drives a lot of people to do stunts such as this one. Now, I'm not saying that it's exactly odd, but what I am saying is that they could have just, you know, built a motorcycle that went fast instead. Number 14. Flying Milliard V10 now let's head back to actual motorcycles that just so happen to look weird. The Flying Milliard V10 is a very unique bike that was made by Alan Milliard, hence the name, and while it may look odd, this is a bike that's able to go about 200 miles per hour. Milliard is world renowned for creating mega-engined bikes, having built more than 30 multi-cylinder machines that range from 4 and 5 pot, 2-stroke Kawasaki machines, to a V12 that's based on a Z1300. So yeah, he likes to take challenges and break them in any way that he can, and he'll admit that making something like the V10 was not exactly an easy thing to do. For example, he had to make several parts himself due to how he couldn't find ones that would work for what he needed, there was no frame as such, and instead a tubular steel front subframe bolts onto the engine, a single-sided swing arm bolts onto the gearbox, and an alloy rear subframe bolts onto the back. But why is this one so so weird exactly? Well, despite the fact that it is a fast beast of a motorcycle, it does have an atypical look that not many would want to ride on. The biggest thing is that it has a rather long frame, and most people prefer either a shorter frame or one that's compact in a way that size isn't exactly a burden on them. Still though, getting above 200 miles per hour on a bike, well that's worthy of praise. Number 13. Neutron. There are certain vehicles from sci-fi and fantasy shows and films that we'd all love to have in real life, but we know we can't in one form or another. An exception to that rule, though, comes in the form of the light cycle from the realm of Tron. The light cycles used by beings of the grid would allow them to traverse the digital space while also emitting walls in order to take down foes. Then, in the sequel, Tron Legacy, the light cycles got a visual upgrade and were eventually made for real in the form of the Neutron. The Neutron is a completely electric motorcycle via lithium battery packs, meaning that it doesn't have any gas emissions and is thus very friendly to the environment. The bike is sleek, meant to slice through the air, so much so that the Parker brothers state that the bike can go up to 100 miles per hour. And while it doesn't exactly emit walls of energy to crash people into, oh, but if it could, traffic would never harm us again. You know, that is, unless someone else had one too, it's actually able to glow like it does in Tron Legacy. The best part about the bike is that while it is a very weird looking bike that's worthy of a science fiction film, it's actually a very popular model. They even have to put a cap on how many they make a year because the engineering that goes into them and how many orders they get can be overwhelming. The future is here, ladies and gentlemen. And yes, oh yes, I do want one. Number 12. Suzuki Biplane 
Despite what the name might imply, no, it's not exactly a motorcycle that's also an airplane. I haven't even gotten that far into science fiction yet, but it might be a matter of time. Rather, this is a concept bike that was designed with a specific purpose. Suzuki's goal was to give the rider the sensation of flying in a vintage biplane with no canopy, a distilled in the wind riding experience, if you will. It conceptually uses a V4 motor with cylinder heads and exhaust headers that are visible on the sides, just like the fabric skinned twin wingers of the last century. The exhaust is tucked in underneath the cowling, and the link type rear suspension can be seen under the tractor style seat. As you can see, the bike honestly has a very aerodynamic look that would make many bike makers jealous. The catch, of course, here is that there are those who might not exactly enjoy the design for one reason or another. For example, because you're going to be riding it like you would fly a plane, you're not going to have a lot of protection from things like bugs or other projectiles. Plus, you would have to be willing to feel the wind in your hair in this particular way, which is not what everybody enjoys. It is an interesting design, I'll absolutely give them that. However, the concept bike is one that would only be made for a certain group of people, and not bikers as a whole, and that right there kind of defeats the entire purpose. Number 11. Bomerland 3-Seater now, I'll admit there have been a few bikes on here that you might not exactly define as weird in the typical sense, but when it comes to this particular bike, we can all agree that it falls into that category. In the period prior to World War II, the automobile was beyond the financial reach of the average family, and motorcycles with sidecars were commonplace as family transport. Enterprising Czech engineer Albin Liebisch embarked on a different philosophy, though, creating three and even four four-seat motorcycles that were sold in Germany under the brand Bomberland. The 1937 Langtoren model is a three-seater with two gearboxes, the second one which requires the passenger to change gears. So that right there makes it a very weird motorcycle in a various amount of ways. The first being that most motorcycles are built for one or even two people at the most. There are a few that have those upward staircase seats that can fit three, but they're just as atypical. This one though elongated the bike from frame to a level that's beyond what we've seen before in other bikes and thus turns out to be odd. We can say though that at least there was a purpose to this kind of building and not just a whim. The maker was honestly trying to help large families with their transport, which is noble, but it's not hard to see why the design didn't go and catch on. Number 10. Triton MM2 Electric Motorbike Combining the romance and elegance of classic motorcycles with the performance of modern-day bikes, a Boston-based designer has created a motorbike concept dubbed the Triton MM2 that runs on electric batteries to provide a sustainable ride, however you can do it in style. Or if I can be honest, the style of someone who really likes anime. I'm not judging, I'm just saying. In fact, what I am saying is that this bike does indeed look like something from the anime Akira. Look at the style of the body and how it's covered from nearly front to back. Even the guy that they show to be riding this bike is someone that looks like they're from an anime. Featuring the body finished in carbon fiber, reinforced in thermoplastic body panels, the electric motorbike provides a range of about 132 miles on a single charge, while the onboard battery pack can be charged through a conventional 100 10 volt outlet in about two and a half hours. Furthermore, it can also reach a top speed of about 160 miles per hour, going from 0 to 100 in only about 4.4 seconds. So while it may look odd to the average bike user, you can't deny that this is a powerful bike that can get the distance while also protecting the environment. Number 9. Sprint Beamer this is a story that's almost too weird to be true. However, it is true. Like, really true. The inspiration for a bike build came from the most unlikely of sources, my pet guinea pig Twinkle. No, I'm just kidding. In this case, it was the most unusual BMW Sprint bike, and it was the vintage M&H Racemaster drag tire. The tire belonged to the amiable Seb Lorenz of the Lucky Cat Garage, a familiar face on the European custom show circuit. And while he was figuring out what to do with the slick, his family provided the answer. 
They bought him an AirTech dustbin fairing as a present, and the rest is literally as you see before you. The Sprint Beamer isn't just a weird looking bike though. You honestly have to wonder why they thought this would be a good design. In fact, if you take on the front facing piece that's meant to streamline it, you can see that it's very much a standard bike by most metrics, but because of how it looks, it turns out to be kind of odd. Number eight, Watkins M001. Yes, this is definitely worth of a Ryan Reynolds, but why gif? Because the Watkins M001 is a very atypical bike that many people are sure to not get at all in terms of why it looks the way that it does, and who thought that it was a unique design idea for a bike? But here's the real funny thing about it all. The man who created it, Jack, was an engineer by trade who had no experience whatsoever with building custom motorcycles. That shows out a lot when you look at the design of the bike because seriously wow working on it for a few hundreds of evenings he finally perfected his innovation onto the Watkins M001 that we all have today perfected might be a stretch because I just don't know what to make of the thing what is it trying to really be exactly it's thin and high and I just want to move on so I will number seven big bear choppers GTX and once again, we're back to more typical designs for bikes that just have a few little oddities that make them stand out. This is the Big Bear Choppers GTX, and most would agree that it's a very stylish looking bike that harkens back to older times while still being innovative in its own right. Its low slung stature, the unique paint job, and the raised handlebars give it a very cool and aggressive overall appearance. And despite its fancy design, the motorcycle offers a pretty relaxed riding position and is fitted with a comfortable seat and an ergonomically designed handlebar. It also comes in two different versions, so you can have options with the kind that you'd want to get. But why is it on this list? Well, it's got a bit of an old school, new school look at points. It kind of makes you feel like it doesn't really know what it's trying to be at times. And to some, it won't really matter. However, it's noticeable to those who know what to look for. Number six. Steampunk Scooter Sometimes people just submit to their own madness because they feel that there's no other choice. Or they think it's fun. It just depends on the day, perhaps. The steampunk scooter that you see before you is a product of a man named Arthur Van Poppel from a town in the Netherlands. And whether you like it or you don't, you have to admit that he did clearly work on the thing a lot to fit the design that he had in his head. It has every single thing that you would expect from something that has the word steampunk in front of it, which includes lots of rivets, little additions that are powered by the steam that the bike runs on, and so on and so forth. But the question is, why would someone want to make something so elaborate? More than likely it was because he could. And now he has something that no one else has, and a lot of people are going to be inspired to parody or even make their own take on it. I'm not riding it, that's for sure. It looks flippin' scary. Number five, Lamborghini V12 Motorcycle. One thing that a lot of people love to do for one reason or another is take something that already works, say like a model of a car, and try to convert it into a motorcycle or other kind of ride. And apparently that's what someone did with a Lamborghini V12. The builder would show up at a caffeine and octane event in Georgia with his creation and fired the bike up for the crowd, and as you can guess, it was a beast of a sound. just like it's a beast of a bike. I'm not really sure about a lot with this bike, but you can definitely tell that the guy worked long and hard to try and get this up to the style that he wanted, whether it was for better or for worse. Does anyone feel bad for the Lamborghini though? Because I kinda do. Number four, Jaguar Leaper Bike. Another example of fusing a car style with a motorcycle can be found in the Jaguar Leaper, a bike that apparently had been in the process of being built for many years before finally being finished. And do I even need to say it? No, really, 
do I need to say it? Just look at the thing. They thought that this was a good idea to literally mold a Jaguar into the body of the bike in order to ensure that it's a Jaguar bike? If this was just a piece of art, you know, kind of like the alien bike should have been, then we'd all be up for it. But the bike took years to make just to get to this final look. And it's made of fiberglass and other materials that just don't really make it in both looks and function as a bike that you should ride. It doesn't even get above 50 miles an hour for Pete's sake. Though props to the guy for the accurate sculpting of the cat, but that's about all you're gonna get out of me. Number 3. The Road Dog. In 1965, William Wild Bill Gelbke built his own bike called the Road Dog. The ginormous bike was 17 feet long, weighing in at about 3,280 pounds, featuring four hydraulic rams in order just to park the bike. Wild Bill toured the country, riding over 20,000 miles, reaching speeds of 90 plus. On one hand, you can tell that this was a man who just wanted to make the biggest and most beastly badass bike possible, and props to him for getting the thing across the country in one piece, as well as making it something to talk about in the biker way. However, the design is all over the place. 17 feet of bike? That can't exactly be the easiest to control, and this is further proof that the motorbike should be compact and slender and not a behemoth like this one. Some people are going to love it, however, to me, it's just kind of odd. Number 2. Hamburger Harry Bike now, if you're picturing a man who decided to take his love of hamburgers and turn them into a bike that he could ride, well, here you go because this man did it. The Hamburger Harley, as it's known, is a transformed 1987 HD Sportster and is the perfect example of what happens when a man takes an obsession to the next level. To be clear, he does like motorcycles as a whole and apparently has a series of classic ones at his place, but this is the one that turns the most heads. And to drive the point further home, he even has a hamburger helmet that he wears as he drives his dragster around Town. Now look, if you're known for something and you want to make something unique to help sell your brand, then by all means. But making a burger bike, man, it just doesn't feel right. Number 1. Chikara Nagata Art 5 Chikara Nagata, a well-known Japanese artist, has been designing motorcycles throughout his career, apart from other works of art for the last two decades. He's brought motorcycle engines from 1939 to 1966 back to life and mounted them on fully working, handmade art pieces on two wheels. And that just brings us to the question of art versus function once again. Because you can tell that these are working bikes and that they're bike shaped, but they also have those touches that are meant to be more artistic than applicable to a true motorcycle. Such as with his Art 5, where you can see that it's basically an x-ray of a bike that's also a functional bike. But sure, there are some bikes that have that open look, but it's usually covered up in other spots for protection and other functions. That's not the case here, but it's his art piece, so who are we to really judge? Which of these rides do you agree was one that dared to push things a bit too far, and which one would you ride even though they don't exactly look like regular motorcycles? And do you know of any others that should be on this list? Let me know all about it in the comments below. Also be sure to check out the other cool stuff showing up on the screen, and I'll see you next time.